In the headlines, Dominique renews its support for Venezuela as that country celebrates over 200 years as an independent country. Die Fest celebrates its 25th anniversary. And CARICOM chairman Alan Chastney says global challenges are forcing small island developing states to make bold choices to secure their survival. I'm Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Prime Minister Skerritt has pledged his support to the government and the people of Venezuela. Mr. Skerritt's comments came during a ceremony to mark Venezuela's 208th anniversary of independence. Venezuela's socio-economic situation has continuously been in the forefront by Western media and usually in a negative light. This, in turn, has led to several international-level discussions on how to respond to the situation in that country. Dominica stands ready, Excellency, as you know, to play whatever part it can based on how the Venezuelan people determine this in a resolution to the challenges which con um, presently confront the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela. But we recognize one government in Venezuela a government that was elected by the people of Venezuela in accordance with its constitution. And this is what we have done and this is what we will continue to do as a nation. Mr. Skirt says international law is clear on how countries should deal with internal situations in other states. The Vienna Convention makes allowance for diplomatic relations between countries. The Vienna Convention does not allow nations to interfere in the internal affairs of countries. And even at the Organization of American States and the United Nations, their main mission is not to interfere. Their main mission really is to assist nations in addressing issues which they may have either internally or between nations. Today we're very happy to be here to celebrate the Venezuelan people and to say that we will continue to stand in solidarity with the government of President Nicolas Maduro and the people of Venezuela, and we stand ready to assist in whatever we can for a resolution to the impasse which currently exists in Venezuela, but we will not interfere in the internal affairs of Venezuela. Venezuela's ambassador to Dominica, His Excellency Jose Moros, expressed gratitude for Dominica's support and friendship over the years. Prime Minister, I do admire you a lot. Many people in Venezuela admire you. And we consider you from the same big country that Bolivar dreamed. I've seen you fight with us for a long time. It is thanks to these loyalties that Venezuela will resurrect from the attacks of those who try to control our natural resources again. We will be back stronger and bigger, have no doubt. In other talk stories, Dominica's annual dive festival has reached its milestone 25th year. The festival, organized by the Dominica Water Sports Association, is the longest-running dive festival in the region and activities run from 5th to 14th July. Former president of the Dominica Water Sports Association, Simon Watch, says though the festival has evolved, it has maintained its core principles. Basic core principles of dive fest being getting local people educated, local people employed in the dive industry, making sure that kids are learning to scuba dive, uh, talking about conservation things, the necessity for saving turtles and 
uh, the marine reserve and things like that so that we, our future generations uh, of Dominicans will be able to enjoy them as well. Uh, also raising funds so that we can support the Discover Dominico Authority and their marketing efforts overseas. Those core principles have always been there. Over the years, Dominica has set itself apart from other countries in the region in terms of its marine practices and extensive education. In the region, we are one of the best islands at looking at many of those things. So when you look at things like operational procedures for dive shops, we have some of the strictest, strictest rules in the area that we wrote ourselves. When you look at the lionfish control efforts, Dominica definitely uh, set the pace for that in the region. So we've accomplished a lot of th things, and a lot of it has come through Dive Fest, reaching out into the communities and educating children, getting children involved so that most of the people you dive with in Dominica, uh, the, the professionals, the, the dive masters and the instructors, they're from Dominica. So those have been some of the really big accomplishments. Dive visitors to the island have high commendation for Dominica's underwater sites, which have almost fully recovered from Hurricane Maria. Now, at this point in time, after we've had a full season, I can tell you clients are raving about our diving. Um, the diving over the last three months has been uh, on many sites as good as I would say I've ever seen it. The quantities of fish, the numbers of juveniles out there, the health of the reefs, the color, um, this is not to avoid the fact that some dive sites were heavily affected by Maria. There's no doubt about it. So Champagne took, took, uh, took some blows, but it's coming back and it's growing back well. Uh, there's another dive site that we don't really go to anymore. But in general, I'd say 85% of our sites are in pristine condition now. In more developments, proprietor of Jungle Bay, Sam Raphael, and historian Dr. Lennox Honeychurch, among main speakers at a youth forum on tourism for residents of Cottage on Saturday. Parliamentary representative, the Honorable Reginald Austri, has invited the young people of the community to Saturday's youth forum, which will be held at the Portsmouth Secondary School. The minister says there are exciting opportunities on the horizon for persons from the north. Some of these opportunities will come from a number of new hotels being built in the area. Prime Minister Skerry toured some of these projects on Wednesday. We're very excited to be here at the Kempinski. Uh, tremendous progress has been made. Obviously, as you know, uh, we've been told the opening will be in October. There are already um, guests um, booked and reserved to, to be here uh, um, for October. Um, you, would, you would have heard from the general manager of Kempinski that within, within, within five days or so, um, they got uh, quite a number of bookings and, there's a, and, and the bookings are increasing um, as the days go by. So it's a good positive uh, sign that um, in, in a matter of weeks, the camping scale Dominica will be able to attract such a certain interest. And he has about uh, nine different um, groups uh, who want to come to Dominica um, to have their conferences. And of course, the logistics have been worked out for these nine different groups in terms of the scheduling of those groups. So, you know, we always felt that um, once we're able to get such facilities in Dominica, because in the past, uh, this, since this government came in, we've had to turn on a number of international and regional conferences because of the inadequacy of, of, of rooms and also the inadequate, um, the non availability or the unavailability of, um, of, of appropriate uh, conference rooms. And the Kempinski has been able to address this uh, with uh, very large conference rooms. And, uh, and of course, for 161 rooms, um, no doubt they will be able to, to, to attract um, the international conferences and regional conferences. I want to appreciate the uh, associated attendant um, benefits, uh, the spillovers for, for, for us in Dominica, the taxi men, the tour operators, the local. Um, bars, the local restaurants, you know, imagine if you have, you know, a thousand people out in Portsmouth or out in the different parts of the country uh, spending money, uh, you know, in the various um, villages, various communities and hamlets. So it's, it's, it's a major plus um, for us. And of course, you have the other hotels in Portsmouth, the, the uh, Anichi uh, Resort, um, Marriott is, is well on its way to, and they'll be open in 2020. But um, and of course, uh, with um, Secret Bay, with the expansion, proposed expansion of Secret Bay by 42 uh, additional villas, 
you know, support certainly will be a, a, a great hub. Saturday's Youth Forum begins at 9 in the morning and ends at 3 in the afternoon. It will feature representatives from the National Development Foundation of Dominica and the Aid Bank. You are watching the Channel 5 News. So stay tuned for more after the break. Attention si vous êtes nom et bien fan. Visitez Place Santé pour examiner corps. Ça c'est un nid pour vous voir si la ni pièce moun au limon qui ni maladie TB et bien maladie sexuelle. En compagnie de moun qui ni maladie HIV, pe ni TB aussi. Sav ki, la ni jérison pour TB. Ou sa vive en bonne santé même si ou ni maladie HIV. Parlez by docteur. Point responsabilité ou. Aide du bout si men maladie TB et HIV. Ou agez tout moun pour examiner corps. Welcome back. The final component of a USAID-funded project comes to an end soon. The USAID-sponsored a $1.2 million project which was spearheaded by the IOM dubbed Support Emergency Shelters Through Emergency Preparedness. Under this project, the first ever emergency shelters manual was compiled and handed over to the people of Dominica. 16 emergency shelters were refurbished and equipped for the hurricane season. Over 20 people were trained to use amateur radios and five murals depicting disaster preparedness were painted at five secondary schools across the country. The final leg under this project is a photo competition of the murals. Chief Education Officer Melina Fontaine believes the murals are helpful in spreading awareness on disaster preparedness. Public awareness when it comes to the disaster information is very, very important. Um, knowledge is key. If you don't know what it is about, you don't know what to expect. And so when you are taken by surprise, bad things can happen. And so that initiative, what I like about it is that it gets our students involved. Um, there's participation from their angle. And so you learn more by doing than if you just have to listen. And the fact that they can be involved in it, I think it will help them to understand um, better what the whole situation is about when it comes to disaster and help them not to be afraid, but to be prepared at all times and know what to do. The Waitukubuli Artist Association was integral in the painting of the murals. It is hoped that wall paintings can be done at uh, other schools around the island. In some schools we are doing different um, hazards, so it's not just hurricanes alone, but earthquakes and tsunamis. And um, um, I am aware that we, we have selected the schools based on their vulnerabilities. And so I think this is very important. So it is awareness for the students and the staff and the community of that school, the people who go to that school. And the fact that you have put in that Facebook competition, I think it's going to be exciting for them. So you will be getting a lot of pictures to be uploaded on your site and, and it, will, it will generate discussion because everybody wants to, to, to do it. It will generate a lot of discussion, not only within that school, but with other schools. So I'm hoping that you might get more money to do the other schools as well. Murals were painted at the Pierre Charles Secondary School, St. Mary's Academy, Dominica Grammar School, Portsmouth Secondary and Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Incoming Chairman of the Caribbean Community CARICOM, St. Lucia's Prime Minister Alan Chastney, says the challenges facing the sub-region force us to make some bold choices to secure our existence. Addressing CARICOM's 40th meeting hosted by St. Lucia this week, Chastney said he was assuming chairmanship of CARICOM at a time when the region needed to show its united strength on key international issues. He said this is also a time to remind the people of the region of the necessity of CARICOM. On the issue of blacklisting, to date CARICOM countries on the list have been trying to comply with the requirements of the EU Code of Conduct Group. The fact is that the EU has been targeting us as individual countries. And we as CARICOM 
miss the initial opportunity to respond jointly. But it's not too late. The question now is, how do we, as developing countries, meet the requirements of a just tax regime while maintaining our fiscal sovereignty? We must, as a region, be committed to a high standard of governance. But this cannot cross the line and infringe on our competitiveness. As a region, we should rebel against the use of a blacklist that permanently damages our reputation. There is absolutely no justification for this mythology. The lingering uncertainty over Brexit is another matter that will continue to concern us in the coming months. We must begin to view this as an opportunity. On one hand, we will have to work as a unified bloc to strengthen our historic relationship with the UK. We must also now work equally hard to formulate a renewed relationship with Europe. The situation in Venezuela is one which continues to occupy CARICOM heads. Chassane says the solution there must be homegrown. The situation in Venezuela remains unresolved and continues to haunt us. The effect of the breakdown can now be seen plastered all over the media in our own countries. The position of the Caribbean community on Venezuela has not changed. We've agreed that the resolution must be by dialogue and it must be a Venezuelan-made solution and that there should be no military intervention, that the rule of law must apply and that the humanitarian situation must be addressed. We also re-emphasize the notion that the Caribbean region must remain a zone of peace. However, we cannot run away from the impact that Venezuela is having, especially as it relates to the security and immigration in the countries within close proximity. Given the critical importance of finding a solution to this crisis and the invaluable work of the special committee appointed by CARICOM, headed by the outgoing chairman, Timothy Harris, I am grateful that they have agreed to continue to take the lead on this issue. I have pledged and continue to pledge my full and unwavering support as we seek to find a resolution. And the United Nations Secretary General told the CARICOM heads meeting in St. Lucia this week, citizen security was among challenges facing the region. Mr. Gutierrez said prevention of violence against women and girls was one of the challenges which the region must address within the wider context of sustainable development. As we shore up the resilience of Caribbean societies, we must address the issue of citizen insecurity. Murder rates in parts of the Caribbean are still very significant. Violence against women and girls is also a dimension of citizen insecurity, which increases in the wake of natural disasters and is an obstacle to resilient societies generally. I'm therefore also pleased that the Spotlight Initiative will be partnering with CARICOM and six countries in the region to make substantial focused investments, some 50 million euros, in prevention and redress for violence against women and girls. It is important that gender considerations underpin all our efforts to promote citizen security and sustainable development. Gutierrez noted that in addition to the increasing cost of managing the effects of disasters, small island developing states also face a range of economic constraints. The small size of their domestic markets and their limited capacity to participate in global markets, particularly damaging when it translates itself into the isolation of their financial systems from the global financial system, hinder them in generating economies of scale. Their heavy dependence on imports, particularly of energy and food, make them highly vulnerable to price fluctuations and other external shocks. And their very high levels of national debt constrain their ability to effectively address high and persistent levels of poverty and inequality. These challenges are further complicated by the difficulties SEEDs face in mobilizing development finance on affordable and appropriate terms. The UN Secretary General was addressing CARICOM's 40th meeting which ended in St. Lucia on Friday.
some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. To end the news, the headlines again. Dominica renews its support for Venezuela as that country celebrates over 200 years as an independent nation. Die Fest celebrates its 25th anniversary. And CARICOM chairman Alan Chastney says global challenges are forcing small island developing states to make bold decisions to secure their survival. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.